The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. in on it <laughs> we just follow it that's all that's an empty safe yeah anyone takes the trouble to get a safe that size they they gotta put money into it Pig's a pig, son. Yeah, but not Harriet. She's like part of the family. You raised her for sale. Don't change your mind. Mark, wait for breakfast. You might want you raised proper with table manners. Better get another couple plates, son. Stranger riding up. some bacon and coffee. Care to join us? Well, thank you. All right, have a chair. No, I'll just, I'll just stand up. All right. Hi. Hi, boy. Take your hat off, Mark. Breakfast, Mark. There's some feet under the lean to for your horse. Huh? Oh. Uh, no, I'm, I'll feed him when I get to town. Oh. North Park? Yeah. Well, if you're planning on settling down, you can take my word for it. It's a good growing community. My boy and I took one look and stayed. Yeah. Nothing I'd like better just to stay in one place. Give me a little spread. Maybe I will someday. I, I got me a job, a steady job. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, that's all right what I do. Everybody's always trying to find out what I do, but I do something. I don't mind telling you, I do it good, too. Well? You're sure for any people, I'm obliged to you for the food. Oh, look now. You are, I guess. You don't have to pay. Well, uh, that, that's a good union dollar. Well, we enjoyed your company. It was our pleasure. Well, you're, you're real friendly, and I, I thank you. You're more than welcome. Yeah. I'm going to get me a spread like this someday. Skittish, mister. I'm sorry. Well, pails like that are hard to come by out here. I'll take that dollar. Is that square? That squares it. What made him spook, Paul? Men like him can never relax. Son, you just had breakfast with a Texas gunfighter.
Now, we may not be as big as Albuquerque, but look out, we're growing fast. Yeah. Now, this is the first real indication that we're a hustling, bustling community of considerable means. We've got ourselves a bank. Now, I want you to meet a man who has faith in the future of North Fork. Our new neighbor, our new council member, our new bank president, John Maysfield Hamilton. Step up, John. Thank you, Judge Hanneman. I think someday you will be as big as Albuquerque. That's why I've invested my time and money in this bank. I want to grow with you and North Fork. But let's put it this way. I can't make money unless you do. Now, unless you folks are radically different from what our research tells us, most of you keep your savings buried in hidden spots on your property. You dig holes, hide it under rocks, bury it beneath trees. Now, this is foolish. All of you neighbors with your money buried in tin cans under your property, I'd like you to take a look at our tin can. This is the finest carborundum steel plate mankind can make. Folks, the walls of this safe are six inches thick, absolutely guaranteed to be fireproof and burglar-proof. But I know what you're saying. What about all those bank holdups we read about? Well, I've got an answer for any man who's entertaining the idea of holding up our North Fork City Bank. Would you step out, sir? I want you all to meet my new bank guard, Mr. Floyd Doniger of Abilene, Texas. Hey, Paul, that's yeah, I know, I know, sir. You want insurance your money's going to be safe? All right. Let's give him a little demonstration of our bank security, Floyd. All right, let her go. Mr. Jones. Floyd Doniger is the man I've hired to guard your savings. Now, it's open house at our bank. You're all welcome. Come in and look around. Good morning, sir. Cake and coffee's on the house, folks. These lovely ladies over here will help you. Uh, give me your attention, please, for one moment. You'll, uh, you'll notice this odd construction here. What's that for, you're asking yourselves? Floyd, if you will, please. There you are, folks. I had this platform built so that Floyd Doniger's got the advantage over anybody entertaining the idea of fooling with your good people's money. I like the cut of this man. Yes, uh, I think it's Banks here to stay, too. What do you think, Mr. McCain? They don't make them any safer. They're impressive enough, I guess. Might even make the marshal think we don't need him when he gets back from Yuma prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, son, we gotta sell that pig of yours. We better get going. I'll see you folks later. See you later. Yes, sir, that's a mighty fine sow you raised there, Mark. Thank you. And now, what did you have in mind to ask for Harriet? Well, I didn't exactly know. Oh, it's your sow, Mark. You're old enough now to do your own selling. I'll be over at the wheelwrights when you're done. Uh, Hattie, don't let him skin you too bad. I don't know. This is an awful sharp trader, this boy. All right, Mark. Now, let you and me start to dicker. You'll put her weight at uh, five stone. Now, figure the head will weigh ten pounds.
Good morning, Miss Patty. Good morning, Good morning. Mr. Hammond. That's right over here. Well, thank you. This is a great moment, isn't it? It certainly it? is. I'd like to deposit my money, please. Well, very well. Just put your name right there. Thank you. No, and the see. amount of your deposit. Sign it right here. Yes. Uh, do I get some sort of a receipt for all this money? Oh, certainly. It's all here in your bank book. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Miss Hattie. Good morning, sir. I'll be glad to count it for you. Well, Good morning, sir. Uh, yes, give me, uh, give me some shade. Okay? I'll be glad to. There you are, sir. Thank you. Paul, I'm going to use this money to buy another pig, raise and sell it to Mrs. Denton. Then I'll buy another one and sell it, and another and another, and you know, Paul, I bet in about a year or so, I bet we'll almost have a million dollars, won't we, Paul? Well, I don't think we'll have that much, son. Well, almost. You know, I bet I could have asked ten dollars instead of five. Mm, you remember one thing. Don't ever look back at a deal. Make a bargain with somebody, you shake hands on it and put it behind you. That's the signature of a man, Mark. Now, you better let me have that to save her. You're going to lose it. Paul? What is it? Well, I've been thinking, Paul. Well, I earned the money, didn't I? What are you getting at? Well, you're always telling me how a man should do what he thinks is right with his own money. Well, I want to put mine in the bank. How'd you come by that decision? Well, I've been thinking about that 2.5% interest, Paul. Think of a boy like me can put his money in the bank? And your money speaks as loud as the next fellas. Well, then it, it'd make me feel like I was a part of something. Like a real man. All right, son. When, Paul? Today? Today? We're digging tree stumps today. Now, I'm going to have my saddle fixed tomorrow. You can make a deposit then. Hey, it's Judge Hunterman. Send to your chores, Mark. Hi there, Lucas. Hi, Judge. Stop in for a cup of coffee? Oh, no thanks, Lucas. I just stopped by for a little chat. We had a wonderful turnout at the bank this morning. Nearly everybody in town. Oh, that's so. Uh, excepting you, that is, Lucas. Oh? The reason I drove out here, the people around here respect you. They, they admire you. The way you've carved out a home for yourself and your boy. You're always honest and fair in your dealings. Now, those that didn't come into the bank are the people that stay out because you do. Judge, they get minds of their own. I don't try and influence anybody. <laughs> well, nonetheless, they respect you. They, they follow your pattern. Tell me, Lucas, what is it? I'll tell you, Judge. Ten years ago, my wife and I put our savings in a little bank back home. Remember the slump of 78? Yeah. The bank folded and we were cleaned out. Doesn't come easy for me now to let someone else look after my money. Well, this man Hamilton has considerable assets. You can check his books. I may change my mind when I see how he runs his business. Right now, he's a stranger to me. Oh, no more than you were when you came here. I remember the day you and the boy rode into town, the day of that big turkey shoot. Hamilton is part of the community, too. The only difference, I came without asking anybody to invest money in my future. Well, I won't press it, Lucas. Of course, a man has a right to make up his mind about his own money. I promised Hamilton that I'd talk to you, and I kept my promise. Well, there's one he's convinced. Mark has five dollars he's going to deposit tomorrow. The bank's got one, McCain. <laughs> That's not a bad average. Well, so long, Lucas. You, you, you let Mark advise you. That's a pretty smart young businessman. So long, <laughs> Judge. Goodbye. Mr. Hamilton? Just finished. See you tomorrow. Well, Charlie, I think we can lock up now. Oh. 
I applaud. <laughs> Say, when was the last time, Floyd? Glory, Flats, Kansas. <laughs> I, I nearly bust when I, I see you in the bank. <laughs> you working for him? Well, what do you think I'm doing? Come on. Get your feet off of Floyd's bed. Hey, Floyd. Floyd, we've been following that safe a long time. What does he mean, am I working for him? I'm getting paid, oh, ain't Oh, he figures you don't plan on working for him for long. If he says anything to Mr. Hamilton about me, I'll kill him. Now, Floyd, you don't understand. We're all playing the same game. We plan cracking that safe, too. Oh, no, no. I might have been thinking about it, but that's as far as it went, just thinking. Floyd. Lord, you got a real sucker's job. Now, what, what are they paying you, huh? 20, 30 bucks a month? No, uh, you can't do it, Gavin. I have to kill you. That's what Mr. Hamilton's paying have me. Have you any idea how much you're guarding for 30 bucks a month? No. About $40,000. Maybe, maybe 45. Now, look. Look, one-fourth of that is all yours. That's more than you can make or steal in your whole life. No, now you're lying. There ain't that much money. There yeah, ain't, huh? Well, I'll guarantee you ten thousand dollars your share alone. Yeah, but then I just have to ride on again. I was figuring on settling down. I could get a spread and just stay in one place. <laughs> what are you? Come on. What are you laughing at? Don't you laugh at Floyd? Don't you laugh at him? Hello, Floyd. I want to tell you something. And what they pay you, you'd have whiskers down to your boots before you could even buy the beginnings of a decent spread. Do you know that? Well, I, I never figured it out time-wise. Floyd, I'm not gonna argue with you. You want to stay in one place, you can. You can stay right in this room the rest of your natural life, which ain't gonna be too long. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fight you. I want that money just like, just like you do. Come on, let's, let's work together. Come on. Come on, drink it down. Uh, drink it. I've been looking the place over and I ain't figured the best way yet. Oh, we have. But since, since you're working for him, made it twice as easy for us. Huh? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, it's just that if you go in by yourself, they treat you more like you're a grown -up. See you at the saddle shop, mister. for you. Well, I'd like to open an account with my five dollars. Well, we'd be proud to accommodate a thrifty, smart man like you. Step right over here and I'll help you myself. with you whenever you make your next deposit. Thank you. Everybody, look 
ahead. Pay good attention. You would have killed the first person who opens his mouth. Well, he's got my five dollars. What are you saying, sir? Would somebody stop him? Please don't go, Paul. I don't care about my five dollars. You stay back there, son. Please, Paul. Paul, please. I don't care about my money. You there. Now, you're as friendly to me. I don't have to kill you. You got money doesn't belong to you. Now, you back off. This ain't none of your business. You got five dollars belongs to my son, mister. Is that squares? All right, now drop the saddlebags. Well, suit yourself. Everybody back, please. Make room for Mr. Hamilton to speak to you. Folks, I'm very sorry for what happened today. I personally picked the man Doniger for the job, and my judgment was bad. However, if you'll just be patient until I count the money and get the bank in order, I assure you that each and every one of you is welcome to take out the money you entrusted to me. Well, that's fair enough. Isn't it? Who said anything about taking money out? Well, that's why everybody's here, isn't it? Well, not me. Uh, I'm here to see about putting mine in. Tell me, Lucas, how come you changed your mind? Yeah, <laughs> Paul, how come? Well, you know, son, sometimes there's a good reason for a man to change his mind. Mm -hmm. 